in infants class 9th and 10th this is first online classes for you during this lockdown time outside the corona is at large but that is not going to stop us we are going to start our class today with newton's first law of motion we shall study law of inertia newton's first law of motion now law of inertia before galileo the scientist had a view that a force is needed to keep an object moving this view was based on the observation that the motion of a body ceases when force is withdrawn from it galileo did not agree with this view he conducted an experiment using two inclined planes of the same length arranged as shown below both the surfaces were made as smooth as possible a heavy steel ball was made to roll from one of the inclined planes the ball rolled down then rolled up on the second inclined plane almost to the same height next he used a pair of inclined planes in which the second inclined plane was longer than the first one as shown below again the ball was made to roll down and as galileo had expected it again rose to almost the same vertical height as shown below he rightly concluded that if there is no friction that is resistive force between the surfaces in contact the ball would have rolled up to the same vertical height he assumed that if there was no friction and the second plane was made horizontal and of infinite length the ball will continue rolling and rolling in order to attain the same height which it never will he concluded that no force is required to continue the motion of the body now from the above discussion we note that if a body is at rest it will remain at rest unless a force is applied on it if a body is in motion it will continue to be in motion with uniform speed in the same direction unless acted upon by an external force sir isaac newton later put the above observations in the form of a law which is called newton's first law of motion it is also called the law of inertia statement according to newton first law of motion if a body is at rest it will remain in the state of rest and if it is in the state of motion it will remain moving in the same direction with uniform speed unless a force is applied on it now look at the following animation and then time for some question answers now time for some questions why do you think the scientist before galileo were of the view that a force is required to keep an object moving question number 2 a heavy mass is suspended by a thread from a rigid support an identical thread is tied at its lower end what will happen if the lower thread is pulled with a jerk and what will happen if the lower thread is pulled without a jerk now think of the answer to these questions the second question a heavy object is suspended by two identical threads here i have used at the lower end total three threads because one of the thread will be breaking and i'll have to tie again so the lower threads are same as the upper thread now the first part of the question what will happen if the lower thread is pulled with a jerk that means pulled suddenly so let us see i am going to pull the lower thread with a jerk suddenly what did you observe the upper thread has not broken although her heavy mass is suspended on it but the lower thread has broken as you can see now the second part what will happen if i pull the lower thread steadily without a jerk now i am going to pull it steadily and not suddenly without a jerk just observe now what did you observe the upper thread has broken now what is the reason behind it we'll see in the second part now 
Inertia and force. From Newton's first law of motion, we get the definition of inertia and force. Now, the definition of inertia. The property of an object by virtue of which it neither changes its state of rest or uniform motion, nor it tends to change its state, is called inertia. The greater the mass, the greater is the inertia. Next, definition of force. A force is that physical cause which changes or tends to change the state of rest or of motion of the body. It may also change the shape and size of a body. Force is of two types, contact force and non-contact force. Now let's come back to inertia. Inertia is of two kinds. First is inertia of rest and second is inertia of motion. Now inertia of rest. If a body is at rest, it will remain at rest unless an external force is applied to change its state of rest. And even on application of force, it resists the change in its state. The inertia of rest is greater if mass is greater. Example, on application of equal forces on a light and a heavy body, the lighter body comes into motion first. You must have seen at a traffic signal when the traffic light goes green, the light scooty moves ahead faster than a heavy motorcycle or a car because the inertia of rest is less for the scooty. Example, in the diagram below, when the card is flickered away, the coin remains in its place due to inertia of rest. It then falls into the glass due to gravity. Next, inertia of motion. A body in the state of motion continues to be in the state of motion with the same speed and in the same direction unless an external force is applied on it. Now, even on application of force, it resists the change in its state. The inertia of motion is greater if mass is greater. Example, when a passenger jumps out of a moving train, he falls down. Initially, his whole body was in state of motion with the train. On jumping out, as soon as his feet touch the ground, it comes to rest, but the upper part of his body remains in motion due to inertia of motion. So he falls down. Another example, the driver of a speeding car on seeing a large rock on the road applies his brake, but alas, his car did not stop in time due to inertia of motion of the heavy car. Now, let's come back to the second question in part 1. When the lower thread was pulled with a jerk, it broke. But when the upper thread... But the upper thread did not break. Why? The answer is, the upper thread is just strong enough to support the load. When we apply a jerk, that is a sudden force for a very short duration of time on the lower thread, the heavy bottle remains at rest due to inertia of rest. So the large force applied on the lower thread does not act on the upper thread. It only acts on the lower thread and breaks it. On the other hand, when the force is applied on the lower thread without a jerk, the magnitude of force gradually increases and the load also gets time to gradually change, it, change its state from rest to motion. Now the force applied on the lower thread also starts acting on the upper thread. The force applied on the upper thread will be more. Reason? Because of the force applied by us along with the weight of the load. So this time upper thread breaks. Now answer the following questions. Name and define the physical quantity which causes motion in a body. Question number two. A ball rolling in a field eventually stops. Explain why. Question number three. Give one example in each case. First, a force stops a moving body. Second, a force moves a stationary body. Third, a force changes the size of a body. And last, a force changes the shape of body. Now, do your homework till we meet again. That is all for today. Answer the questions till we meet again. Stay safe at home. Wash your hands whenever you come from outside and take care. Goodbye and good luck.